This is the only place where you get true justice in the Big Sills way. Holy cow, mud on. Oh, oh my God almighty, man. Hey, listen, you better buckle up. You guys better buckle up today. We start the program off as we always do here on a football Monday, though. Big Sills. Hey, listen, I want to start it off. Let me let me try to start off on a nice note. Olympics were good. They had closing ceremonies last night. I love the track and field, the weightlift and all that. Exhibition football over the weekend was good. Caleb Williams actually looked pretty good. He did. Caleb Williams looked pretty good. Jaden Daniels. My boy, Xander, he looked outstanding. There you go, man. You see that guy rolling that offense, man, for the Washington Commanders? Did you see that guy, my guy, Jaden Daniels? That Washington Commander team is going to be a force in the NFC East. By the way, we want to start off by saying welcome aboard to our brand-new partner here on Jacob, BetUS. We are powered this entire program by BetUS, and we appreciate you guys. And thank you guys so much. Please check out the website if you're looking for a new betting house this coming football season. BetUS is your home. So we look forward to that. We thank you guys very much. Better buckle up. Better buckle up, baby. JM goes to Commander's secondary shit. Okay. This is where you're going to get truth, justice, and the big sales way. Unlike that bullshit you've been listening to those press conferences on the Eagle website, and even to some extent, even with our guys. Holy shit. Let's bring things into reality here. Let's have a reality conversation here. Okay. Um, that game was awful on both sides. You know why? It was all twos and threes. Anytime you get backup players, you're going to have pre-snap penalties. You're going to have a lot of um, bad football. And it was on display Friday night against the Ravens. It was an absolute tough evaluation. Even Vic Fangio said you have to temper with what you saw because it was twos and threes. 95% of the players that you saw on the football field, you won't ever see again in pro football. The Ravens played four first-teamers all night. Four. You played your entire defense. By the way, I thought it was one of the biggest bullshit reasons when Sirianni said, well, we didn't feel like we wanted to play our offensive guys because of the weather. Oh, okay. So you felt it was okay for the defense first team guys to play, but not the offensive first team guys? Why? Because you spend more money on that side? You got a better football team on that side? So what you basically did was you gave the night off to the money guys and you made the inexperienced guys work. Okay, just say that. Don't come up with some bullshit answer or some bullshit reason. Just say defense needed more. We didn't want to play our big star players. We thought they may get hurt because you don't have any star players on defense. Get this. Oh, I see. It's okay for the defensive first team guys to play. Okay? You're damn right Ravens didn't play their first team offense. And your defense looked like shit against twos and threes, and I'll get into it here in a minute. Here's some of the guys I thought stepped up and looked nice. I thought Will Shipley looked good. Jeremiah Trotter continues to improve. He's actually, once again, better than I thought. Um, I thought Quinya Mitchell was decent. I'll tell you, a guy who I thought really played well. Needs to get some more reps, Trevor Keegan. Remember I told you on draft day, that was my favorite pick in the draft, was Trevor Keegan. I think this guy could be a starter on that football team next year. I think Trevor Keegan can start in the offensive line next year. Okay? Remember something when I tell you this flat out. 
to sit here and say that you guys look good against twos and threes, those Raven players will never play. They didn't play their first team defense or first team offense. Ravens played four first team guys. Four. Four first team guys. Four first team guys. Guys, as you always do, please hit the like button. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so again, my initial takeaway was I did like this aspect of it, though. Even though they were not very good players, that the younger players that the Eagles rolled out there and played them against, I think it's a great way to matriculate the young players into the NFL and see what the league looks like. And you can keep upping that each and every single week. And it's called player development. Throwing all those young players like Jalex Hunt or Quinion Mitchell or when Cooper DeGene gets back against top flight guys is disastrous. But to put him in a game like that, you get a chance to see what NFL game tempo is. So it's a good thing. Again, this is not all bad. Yeah, I'm, again, it's actually not bad at all. Okay, again, like the first three series, your pass rush was zero. And I even loved how Vic Fangio talked about all the players. You're going to get more of an honest assessment from Vic than you are Nick. Nick will tell you everything and nothing. And then blow everyone up, and it's not true. Vic will tell you who you are. Okay? And he actually talked like that. And I love listening to the coaches. Okay? I, I, I thought, again, I came away with a lot of things that they did well in that game. Matriculated the younger players. I thought the quarterbacks moved the ball. Um, anytime you get twos and threes. You know one thing that I have realized? Absolutely, Daniel. Vic Fangio is a breath of fresh air. You know the one thing that I really loved? I now know why Kellen Moore was brought here. Um, why do you guys think Kellen Moore was brought here? What would be the most important thing that Kellen Moore was brought here? What do you think Kellen Moore... And the most important thing that Kellen Moore was brought to Philadelphia for. And you're starting to hear players say it. Abraham says to bring stability to the offense, period. Veteran status brings in experience. Motion. D, that's nice. I like that. Super Bowl sales. Checkdowns. Um, scapegoat to be our head coach next year. Play action. You know what I think he brings? And it's evident on how the players talk about him. Let me see where Tanner McKee said that. His blitz check rules are insane great. This guy's got a way of checking, and he has check rules on blitzes. I'll tell you something about the guy that I've noticed Friday night. His check rules that he has in his O-line, even with the twos, I thought they were great. I thought they were great. He has great check rules. This is going to be instrumental for Jalen Hurts and all the quarterbacks that play on that Eagle team. His rules on checks, motion, and his route patterns, you can see it. Even with the twos and threes, it's exceptional. I watched that game, and I went back and watched it three times. His pass routes are mature. His check rules on blitzing are exceptional. The quarterbacks, Tanner McKee and Kenny Pickett. Now, they didn't pick them all up, but you can see there's new rules in the building compared to what there's been. Quite frankly, I think Kellen Moore has better check rules than what Jason Kelsey did. Now, let me back up. 
It's twos and threes, Sills. Let's not get out of hand here. Okay? Let's let let's not get out of hand. But yeah. Okay? Yeah. You can see it. You can see it. Kellen Moore is bringing um he, he's bringing a lot more diversity in options of who to throw the ball to. There's more clarity of vision for the quarterbacks to see what's in front of them. It's a pro offense. I'll tell you what, man, guys, you're right. Your coaching last year sucked because the shit that I saw, even with backups on Friday, is night and day. Just in your rule, rules and protection, slide protection, man protection, zone protection, all the things that confuse defensive tackles. Wait till you get your first team guys in there. It's going to look insane, great. It's, it's going to look even better. That was pretty good, man. That was pretty good. Okay? So I really enjoyed watching Kellen Moore run that offense. I thought Tanner McKee was excellent. I thought Pickett, again, you look at the arm, I don't know. I mean, you know what I think he is? You know who Kenny Pickett is to me? I don't know. Um, a better version of Tommy DeVito. Cooper Rush. He's something like that as of right now. He's like Cooper, maybe a little better than, I don't know. Cooper Rush, something like that. That's what I see. You know, he's okay to have on your team, but he's not gonna want to he's not gonna want to stretch a ball games for you if your QB goes down. Okay. He he's I think Gardner Mitchie's better. So I think your best backup that you've had in the building in the last three years in the Nick Sirianni um era has been Gardner Minshew. So I don't know. I, I think he's okay. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I'm not on the other side of the ball. I'm awake or you. Now, remember something. Let's go over to the other side. I thought the Ravens second team O-line blew up the tackles in the first two series. They got knocked off the ball. You had zero rush. Um, Their backup quarterback situation in Baltimore, I don't even know who those guys are. I, I, I have no idea who they are. I've never seen any of those guys. Oh, jo Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson, who's been on 14 teams. I knew Josh Johnson when Doug Williams wanted him in Tampa. I think the first time Josh Johnson came into the league, I think the Bucks and John Gruden had him. That's how far back he goes. Josh Johnson goes back to the days of John Gruden. Okay? In Tampa. That's how far back he goes. The backup situation in they got to fix that thing, man, because if Lamar goes down, you'll win four games. That thing's atrocious. Guys, please do me a favor. We're trying to get to 250 likes. Please hit the like button. Thank you. Okay? Their season's over if Lamar goes down, says JM. I second that. So let's get into a little bit of, again, more depth into the takeaways. Once again, man, the defense side – Starters played. Offensive starters didn't play. Do I have a problem with that? That the here's my here, here's my problem. Mahomes played. Allen played. Burrow played. All the big name quarterbacks played over the weekend, except your guy, because it rained. Jesus Criminy. You don't play in inclement weather in Philly. I mean, those guys played. Anthony Richardson coming off an injury played. I saw everybody play except the Eagle guys. I mean, what's the deal here? So you're just going to drop those guys in and parachute them in in Sao Paulo against – I thought Jordan Love looked fucking awesome. Holy shit, did he look good. Dude, Jordan Love. Holy cow, did he look good, man. He looked great. 
he's going to be a problem. He he's going to be a problem. Okay, he's good look. That's a good looking quarterback. I thought JJ McCarthy man played better than I thought. I even actually think Bo Nix. I actually think Bo Nix looked pretty decent. Burrow did play, guy. Not true, Taylor. Fake news. Burrow played. Burrow didn't play. Shows you what he knows. Burrow did play. Um, Sills always wants checkers when the Eagles play chess. Eagles play chess? You're one in three playing chess. Come up with a better line. I'll tell you what, Charlie. Jordan Love's going to win a Super Bowl. He's going to win a Super Bowl. I did not think that. I couldn't have been more wrong about a player. I can't believe he's that good inside of 24 months. I cannot believe that. That Matt LaFleur can coach. Okay? Um, Taylor says Prescott didn't play. I said big-time quarterbacks. This is why I dislike it when people judge before actually watching. Kelly has adjusted to each quarterback talent he had. I feel pretty rely too much on PFF stats. Who's wh what are you talking about? Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Lamar didn't play. That's a big time quarterback. Okay. Look at LJ. He's been in the league four years. Your guy's been in the league five years. Jordan Love has played 24 months of football as a starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Your guy's been in half a decade. You want to go there? Okay. Jordan Love looks sensational. Sensational. Okay. Sensational. So, yeah, they were, they were, no, they were drafted in the same year. How about this, dickhead? He's way better than Hurts. That guy is a deep pass thrower. Boy, man, I cannot believe how good he is. Let's move on. Trotter stepping up. Okay, Trotter stepping up. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore got to the mic. See, I don't listen to reporters. I really don't listen to shows. I don't give a shit what people think. I care what the coach says and the players say. I don't care what a reporter says. I have no caring what he says or thinks. He sees the game completely different. You know why? He sees it looking down at a notepad. I see it through the face mask of playing the game. That's my difference. Or being in a team meeting. Or, or, or being in and around players, not around reporters. That's how I see the game. So, and I listen to the coaches and players, not reporters. I seriously don't care what their opinions are. Okay? Now it says, I don't care what Sill says, but he's here. Thanks for coming aboard. Thank you. Let's move on. Kellen Moore. Um, processing the combination of quarterbacks, he said the communication with the guys was really good and what they're doing. And the communicating, you can tell that that's a major focus for him, is communicating with his players and going back and forth into their ear, telling them and asking them what they're seeing. He, he's, he is a good coach. He, 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 he is a really good coach. I thought Tanner, I, I thought Tyler Steen, um, he got a ton of reps. I'm not sold on him. Sorry. They are not going to commit. No coach is committing. Whether you listen to Nick or you listen to Kellen, no one's committing to um, Mekhi Becton. I thought Xander asked a really great question this morning. You know, he may win the job, but is he good? 
I had no. Is he a capable guard? Or is he just filling the hole? It's a great question. We'll find out. That tells you a little bit about Tyler Steen. This guy hasn't played a lot of ball, man. I'm starting to go this way on him. Hey, I don't see it. I mean, you're hurt. You're not that good when you're in. Where are we going here? You're a third-round pick. You're a third-round pick, guy. Okay? I don't see it. Show it to us. By the way, people are rooting for you. Nobody's not rooting for you. We're rooting for you. Seals, I was disappointed with the edge rushers. Me too, Kyle. And I'll explain to you what Vic said on that Nolan Smith sack. Because he says it in the press conference too. Um, he says he's excited about the wide receiver group. Well, outside of Devontae and outside of um, AJ. Remember what I told um, um, Xander a couple months ago? You don't have very good wide receivers. Outside of year two, the rest of them are dudes. They're, they're not, are they? The most important thing you can get out of that. Will any of them be reliable? You don't have to have stars. I'm not looking for stars at the three, four, five, and six. I'm not. I'm looking for just people that are reliable. Can I rely on you? Probably the guy I would rely on the most would be Britton Covey. That Anaya Smith sucks. Get him off the team. It's time to fire that guy. He's terrible. Okay? Not, not, a, not a loss. First of the five um, round draft, po draft choices that they took, he stinks. Get him out of there. I need a roster spot. Go find another guy. Okay, go go find another guy. He sucks. It's time. Move on. Okay. Um, I think again, like I said, I was really really happy to see Trevor Keegan play the way he did. I thought he played well, man. You know, I know it's against twos and threes of the Ravens, but I thought he played well. I did. I really liked the way he played. Okay? I do. Sales complaining too much. Hey, fuck that guy. I'm talking to you like a coach talks to their players right now. And if you don't like it, leave the locker room. I thought Trevor Keegan played really well. Um, I want more reps with him. I might even try to flip him over to right guard and see if he could take some snaps on that side. Because he looked good. I told you guys this. Now, remember this too, guys. If Tyler Steen sucks, but Keegan steps up, it's a wash. Keegan will take that spot on the roster of Tyler Steen. He's cheaper because he's a fifth rounder. Th that's what you call wash. Steen's a third rounder. That's equity. That's kind of a big pick. But you make it up in the money. Okay? You make it up in the money. I'm all right if Steen blows up and Keegan steps up. You win that. It's good. You, you, you found the... You found a guy in the draft to replace a guy in the draft. That's what you want. You don't want to have to replace a guy with free agency. Why? How he knows if Beckton wins that job, he's got to fork up $20 million next year. Or he'll leave. Okay? Hey, Will Shipley, man, is um, he's a ball player. Now, I don't know what that means yet. What's his role? He can catch the ball. He can block. He can run in between the tackles. Dare I say this? He's got the same skill set of a Christian McCaffrey kind of guy. Not saying he's McCaffrey. I'm not saying he's anywhere near that. But it's the prototype running back that you're looking for in today's NFL that can pass probe. See, if, if Will Shipley is going to play, this year in the NFL for the Eagles. You know what it starts with? Pass protection. If he can't pass protect, he can't play. That's why Rashad Penny, health, and he can't block. 
still the guy runs, he's 5.7 yards a carry. And he never saw the field last year. And he was healthy. Think about that. Time goes. Smith is not a bust. He sucks. He sucks. I've seen not one redeeming quality from that player that I enjoy, nor do I think even the Eagles know that. Um, I really like, I really like this kid Shipley. Um, maybe he is a Danny Woodhead type of guy because that's what kind of Woodhead did. Um, catch the ball out of the backfield. I thought he did well on his protections. Good. McBecton did a nice job. Again, against twos and threes of the Ravens. Twos and threes of the Ravens. Okay. Here's Prince. Thanks, Prince. Which is fine. If we have to sign Beckton and Keegan as a player, then we just solved the offensive line. I just said that. I just said that. The problem is you got to pay 20 million bucks for Makai Becton. Because if you would have had Steen and Keegan, you're on rookie deals. Now you got to pay 20 million for a for, for a free agent. You 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 missed the money, dude. You're not going to sign another guy in your old line for 20 million. He's going to command, if he starts 17 games for you, Prince, he's going to command 15 to 20 million dollars. Whereas if you had Steen and Keegan, they're on rookie deals, you're paying them three apiece, saving money, and you got starters. What you don't want to do is cover a miss in the draft with free agents. You're going to have to cover a right guard miss with Becton and pay him $20 million if you want to keep him. Cheese goes, I don't see 20 Well, I'll tell you what. I didn't see $15 million on what um, Andre Dillard got in Tennessee either. Prince goes, okay, I got that. But that will be Lane's replacement. That's if the kid wants to stay in Philly and wait two years. I, hey, listen, you're paying me $20 million and play, paying me money, um, top flight money like that, Prince? You can convince me with dough. You know what I'm saying? You you can convince me to stay in Philly with dough, not promises. Promises mean shit to me. NFL breaks them all the time. Give me some money and we're good. Guys, please hit the like button. Look, look at this guy. The sky is falling? What the fuck are you talking about? I think your guys did a good job. I liked how they worked in their young guys. What sky is falling? What have I said? Sky is falling. What? What? I haven't even got to some of the defensive guys yet. What? Sky is falling. Keegan played well. Makaya played well. Kellen Moore did a nice job. What are you talking about? Holy shit, you guys are the biggest babies I've ever met in my fucking life. Did Lamar Mayfield? I don't give a shit about that. I said top flight guys. Mayfield's a top flight guy. Stay with me, kid. Stay with me. Let's go here. Um, holy cow, these guys got the attention span of a four-year-old. Okay. Um These joint practices, the Eagles seem to put a lot of love into that. Okay? I suppose. Here's some more of um, Kellen. He said, blitz pickups. There is no question. Each quarterback has a different rule book. How about that? He He's built his check rules on blitzes. For three different guys, Jalen, Kenny, and Tanner. That's detailed and exactly what you do when you're a top flight coordinator. Not every guy plays the same. Fantastic. 
That's a guy who does not work a 12-hour day. That's a guy that works a 23-hour day. Putting that together, not every guy's going to drop back and be in the same skill set. He's preparing every one of those quarterbacks, Kellen Moore, to start September 6th versus the Packers with their own set of rules and their own nuance of the offense. It's really good. Okay? It's really good. Okay, it's really good. Um, they got to clean up a little bit of the penalties, but that's okay because you have a lot of young guys out there. Pre-snap sucks. I hate that stuff. Okay? Okay, Pre pre-snap sucks when you get those kind of penalties. Thanks for reminding me, guys. Please hit the like button. Thank you so much. Tills said, Will Shipley is the next. That's not what I said. I said he's got a skill set that resembles that. Once again, open your ears and not your mouth, JM. Open your ears. He's got a skill set like that, not the next. There's only one McCaffrey. Okay? Sills, if Shipley can play and be counted on, it will be how he options as Barkley's contract gets near at the end. Now, here, Bob, I think Will Shipley will be more of an impact on this football team in three years than Saquon Barkley will because that's the kind of back Helen Moore wants like a Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard resembles um, a Will Shipley more than he re resembles a Saquon Barkley. Running backs um, in Dallas outside early Zeke don't get the ball 25 times. And Barkley's a 25 carry guy a game. Barkley's not going to get the carries that he that he used to get in New York. They're not handing the ball 25 times to him a game. Be lucky to get it 16 times a game. That's why the numbers you guys are saying of 1,500 yards, that ain't happening. You're going to be looking at a number that's going to be more important to Kellen Moore. You know what that number is? Five yards of carry. If you got him at five yards of carry and Jalen Hurts at 4-7 a carry, between those two guys, every time they touch the ball, they get nine yards or almost 10 yards. Unstoppable. Feeding a running back in today's NFL is ridiculous. You're looking at yards per play, not just feeding a guy 28 carries. Stupid. You're looking at guys who can move. Hey, you're looking at an offense that can move the sticks. Think about that. 4-7 for Hertz and five yards of carry for Barkley. Barkley only gets the ball 17 times, but every time he touches it, it's five yards of carry. And because he catches the ball, he gives you 100 yards a game. You're unstoppable. You're unstoppable. You'll walk right down the field on teams. I don't care how good you are. Um, Britton Covey can play, man. Got to find out how reliable he is and durable. Got to find out how reliable and durable is he. Is that a guy you're going to be able to carry? Is that a guy that's going to be able to be relied on to build a game plan around? Okay, is that a guy you're comfortable with? that can carry the load of what he has to do. I'll tell you what. Hey, Xander, am I right? At Clemson, he played a lot of snaps. He seemingly was in their offensive backfield every play, and he did that for like three years. Caught the ball, he blocked, he ran the ball. Their offensive line was not very good his last two years at Clemson. But he again, he's got a skill set that is like McCaffrey. And for some of you idiots out there, what I'm saying is he can catch, he can run, and he can pass probe. Can Covey be our Julian Edelman? I'm not looking for that out of him. Well, like a Welker like that? Like a Welker? Okay? Like a Welker guy? Yeah, I guess so. I think that's cool. Plus, you got him at special teams. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Guys, please hit the like button. Appreciate it. I've been saying this for months. I would have signed Henry instead of Barkley. But 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 Charlie, I don't even think Derrick Henry's the right sign in Philly. Barkley's the right sign. You don't have to give him the ball as much. For Derrick Henry to be a force for you, he's got to get the ball 25 times a game. Okay? He's got to get the ball 25 times a carry. You've got too many star-studded athletes on your offense. I'm not taking reps away from AJ and Devontae just so, just so Henry can get his carries. Seals, why does everyone act like McCaffrey is the first dual threat? Yes, Falk and Westbrook, Tomlinson. Um, those guys were the beginning dudes, especially Marshall Falk. In the offense, that greatest show on turf, talking to Mike Martz, said it numerous times, the offense went through Marshall Falk. And anytime you have a dual threat guy back there like that, well, here, let's just do this. The offense in San Francisco doesn't run through any other player other than McCaffrey, and that includes the quarterback. Okay? Hassan Reddick requested a trade from the Jets. So what? So what? You're a New York Jet. Great. So he's telling them uh, because they didn't put him on the active roster. That's why. You know why didn't him? Why do you think the Jets didn't put him and they took him off the active roster? Why do you guys think he did that? Why do you guys think that Jets took him off the active roster? Why do you think? Trade? No. No. Why do you think they took him off the active roster? Okay. Because there's probably a bonus that was due to him. And when you're not on the active roster for particular dates, there's dates on your contract that have a calendar date and he probably missed it opening of the first week of exhibition football. He's not on the active roster. He probably had a hundred thousand dollar bonus there. Second week. Let me tell you something. You don't just get some of these veteran guys just don't get camp checks. They get calendar checks. You're on the first. You think Patrick Mahomes gets a camp check? Patrick Mahomes gets paid normal pay during exhibition football. 90% of the league and players don't. Okay? They don't. Here. Um, Vic and Kellen talk a lot to each other about, hey, can I see this today? Hey, can you show me this today? Multiple fronts and defense. Kellen will show multiple looks and coverages and sending pass routes out to Vic so Vic can get a good look. That's pretty good stuff, man. Two coaches communicating with one another like this. I'll make it very clear. The Philadelphia Eagles have three co-head football coaches. Kellen Moore, Nick, Nick Sirianni, and Vic Fangio. Every guy has his place in that organization right now, and everyone has a role. And their roles are being defined. The only guy that's a misfit is Nick. Those two coaches are total say. But they have to play a little bit of the political game because there is a head coach. It's probably an uncomfortable situation. Um, Ron, um, Ronald goes, Dan, is that normal? Well, it's actually a great question. I would imagine that Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh allowed their coaches to do what they want to do. The only difference is those coaches hired those assistants. Todd Munkin is a John Harbaugh hire, not a Eric DaCosta hire. He hired him. He was handpicked by John Harbaugh. You want to know how great a coach John Harbaugh is? John Harbaugh goes, you know, we had a coach in here for Joe Flacco, completely different style. Fires that guy. Then he brings in Todd Munkin. Never gotten away. Look what was best. There lies the difference in why you fucked up last year with Brian Johnson. 
because the organization believed they knew what was best for Jalen, not Nick. Is there a chance the Eagles bring him back, Reddick? You know, I don't think he burned any bridges. I, I, I don't think he's burned any bridges. They brought Gardner Johnson back, and he was talking shit on you. The Eagle fans. And they brought him back. See, so Barkley can transition from Kerry's guy to touch his guy. He could be more productive, less wear. Yeah, absolutely, Bob. Bob, Bob right here. This is what I think they envision with Barkley. Higher production on less carries. Less is more. Okay? This, this is what I see in how they're looking at Barkley. Barkley's importance, Bob, is not going to be in his total yardage. Here's where I'll tell you why Eagle fans and some people are dumb as a rock. You had so many players last year that had career year numbers, and the team sucked at the end of the year. This is going to be about moving the sticks, not about individual statistics. Last year, Brian Johnson did a hell of a job for all the players to get contract raises, and yet the team failed. Kellen Moore is building an offense that moves the sticks. That's what he's doing. He's building an offense that's going to be productive. I'll tell you something when we get to Tanner McKee here in a minute. And what he said also about um, Kellen Moore. Let's go to my next guy, Milton Williams. Man, I like him. I like Milton Williams. I, I, I like him. I'd, I'd love to have him in my rotation on my football team, and I'm talking all 32 teams. There's a guy on your defense that could play on every single team in this league. It's him. His versatility. You could play him at nose. You could play him at tackle. You could play him at end. You could play him at nickel. He, he, and he's good, and he's productive. He's got great hands. He's in shape. He could play 800 snaps if you had to. I like him, man. He's a no-shit type of guy. Every football team should have two of these guys on the roster. He's a reliable, durable, and dependable player. And good. There will always be a place in National Football League for players like Milton Williams. Always be a place in the league. I think Vic really likes him. And I think Clint Hurt likes him. I know he does. I've talked to Clint. Um, somebody asked him about his contract, and he goes, man, I ain't worried about that shit. I got to earn my opportunity. That stuff will take care of itself if I earn my opportunity. He's right. More snaps he gets, more money he makes. If Milton Williams has 800 snaps this year, Milton Williams will make between 12 and $15 million. Somewhere may not be Philly, but he's going to make some money. That guy could go anywhere in the NFL right now and start on 75% of the defensive lines in the league easily. He could start in Tampa. He could start in Carolina. He could start with the, with the Rams. Um, he could start with the Bears. He could start in Minnesota. He could start in New England. Probably start in Buffalo. He's a good ball player. Patrick Johnson was the highest graded PFF player on defense. Do you think he can make the difference this year? No. Patrick Johnson who? No. Um, I like him. Consistent player, too. Okay? Consistent. Seals, did you see Nolan Smith get pancaked by the Ravens tied in? I did. Um, he talked highly of... um. What's that kid's name? Jermo? What's his name? Xander, how do you say his last name? Uh, Jeromo? He talked highly of him. Works hard. He's going to be ready to play. And he's going to create us some depth. 
It's good. You know what? Just because you don't have a name like that, Ojimo, um, Ajimo, hey, Pickin, he talked highly of him. Said that he's having a really good camp. And he may step up just because, hey, get this. Now you get an opportunity to get out there, get some reps. Okay. Good. Good. Let's go to Vic Fangio. The defense. Vic said he liked the end of the game. Please hit the like button, guys. Thank you guys a lot. I appreciate this. You guys are great, man. Please, um, by the way, okay, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming aboard here on this Football Monday. And I'm going to give you the honesty of it. Once again, just a little bit of a synopsis over the offense. With what the twos did and Kellen, Kellen Moore was the star of the game. Shipley looked good. Keegan looked good. Uh, Becton looked good. Um, I didn't think the receivers were anything to write home about. But they were okay. They made some plays. I thought the quarterbacks were in control of the game. Um, I thought the running backs looked decent. I thought they were. But again, temper it, back it with twos and threes. So Vic Fangio was asked what he liked most about the game. He goes, the ending. He said there was a second quarter between the second and beginning of the third where they did some pretty good things where they got a couple back um, – Back to back to back, uh, three and outs. That's what you want in a defense, three and outs. Chance we could trade Milton for Michael Parsons. Never, dude, he's good, he ain't that good. Um, there, there was a stretch in the middle again, um, temperate twos and threes where they got off the field, they got off the field. Now, remember something. I heard John McMullen, and not just John, everyone go. Play- Dude, Nicobe played against people he'll never play against in his life. I mean, you played good against twos and threes? Okay. <laughs> it's fool's gold. That shit's fool's gold. You, you're, you're hyping yourself up for a guy like that, for massive failure. Now, Sills, does that apply also to to, um, Trotter? No, because that's Trotter's first look at NFL game tempo. And he excelled. That's his first look. Dean has seen that. He knows that they're twos and threes and what that means. Trotter didn't. Trotter was drafted to be a special teams guy. And he went out and played. He went out and played. Dude, my opinion of Kobe Dean hasn't changed at all still. You're you're playing decent against twos and threes. It's fool's gold. You put him out there against top flight guys, will get annihilated. He's not good. Stop. Even Vic said, hey, you have to always temper yourself because you're playing against perennial backups in twos and threes. So you have to temper it. His own words. Um, another thing with Quinion. Quinion's first look at pro action. Excellent. Good. Made plays. Saw what the game tempo looked like versus Toledo. You know what you look like, and you know what you look for for a player like Trotter or um, Quinion Mitchell. What's the one thing you look for? Do they look like they're out of place when they're on the field? Did it look like 
it was too big a moment for him. And it didn't. You know, you 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 get into a game. Hey, dude, when you play in a football game and you're playing against the Florida Gators, and get this, I'm getting ready to play against the Florida Gators on a Friday. My situation was the weirdest thing in NFL history. I'm getting ready to play the Gators on Friday. I'm lining up against Walter Payton and the Bears 48 hours later. I could not believe the amount of game tempo and speed the league had compared to college football. 48 hours. I'm playing against the Bears on Sunday at Tampa Stadium. You're like, shit. This is pretty quick. Not playing starters while installing a new offense is crazy. Andy always had five starter, five starting at quarterback. Hey, and 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 Sean Mahomes played this weekend too because he wanted to do some installations uh, for the Chiefs' offense, and they played him. And and they played him. Click the join button to become a Jacob member. Thank you, Prince. I really appreciate that, man. Prince putting this out there for you guys too, man. This is really cool, and we thank Prince a lot for doing that. Thank you, brother. Um, Sills, we will know, get to see how good Vic is. This D looks soft. It did. It did some decent things. I'll get to it in a minute here. We do not have the right personnel. Vic will need to change his scheme to field a respectable defense when six of the starters are just okay. That sounds about right. Okay. It sounds about right. Let me get into it more here. Um, I thought the Ravens blew him off the ball in the first two drives. And that's Jordan Davis and uh, Jalen Carter in there. Now, knocking rust off, probably. Getting acclimated. Okay. I'd rather happen there than against Green Bay September 6th. Then it settled down. They settled it down. Okay. Nothing to get nervous. I'm not nervous about Davis and Carter. Get some reps in there. Get him out of there. Don't let him get banged up. You know? It's okay. James Bradbury is going to make this football team. You need to get used to that. He's making the football team. He gives them depth at corner, and he gives them depth at safety. He's making your team. That's a pretty big paycheck for a backup, 12 million bucks. All those Georgia linebackers are trash cans. The only positions I'll take from Georgia is defensive tackles, cornerbacks, and maybe O-line. We'll see what this guy Brock Bowers does too, but that kid could be pretty good, disciple. Okay? Um, Bradbury's making your team. Kelly Ringo, I'm not going to put into the category of Nicobe. I'm going to put him in this one. He really hasn't seen a lot of reps. So you still don't really know what you have with Kelly Ringo. Thanks for all these super chats, guys. Really appreciate it. You really don't know what you have with Ringo. However, he refuses to let offense get live reps. No strong-minded coach will accept this. I, I hate what I how it was put out there, too. Yeah, I didn't feel really comfortable putting our offense out, but go ahead, defense. Just shows you what they think of them. Defense needs more work. So the offense that fell apart last year against the Bucs in the playoff game didn't need work? Are you fucking crazy? You mean to tell me that team that fell apart, A.J. Brown had one 100-yard catch game um, in seven weeks last week or last year, didn't need to get back on the field and put some work in? Where'd you come off with that? Who has that mentality? It was too wet for my offensive money guys, but not my D guys? Hey, dude, I get it. The D guys need work. But you're trying to tell me your offense doesn't? Okay. Sure, okay. It's worked one of the last three years. Actually, it worked last year. Then when he needed it the most, it fell apart. 
Sales IML Bradbury is like having a full size spare in the, and that's right, it is in the trunk. Happy to have him if there's a flat. I would say early or even late in the season, having a guy like that on my team. Absolutely. LB play again. Um, Against the twos, threes. Yeah, okay. They did their job. Trotter, I was impressed with. Anyone else? No. How about Dean Sills? No. That guy does not impress me. Um, this is what no, this is what Vic Fangio said about that Nolan Smith sack. Yeah, the left tackle blew the assignment. He got his leg out late. And Nolan Smith did the one thing that he had to do was cash in, and he did. Okay. It was a it was a broken blocking assignment. Those were Vic's words. Andreas goes to Kobe's a game day player. Like, when was this? When's he ever been a game day player guy? Go ahead and cry seals. I'll let you slide today. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Again, I said Trotter looked great. Hey, dude, stop getting butt hurt. If I am critical of a player and giving kudos to other players, and you don't like that I come in here and fucking gloss over all your guys, that's not what I do. I don't gloss over people beating up on people who you'll never play against. Take it from a guy who was cut. Here, let me let me give you a great example, personal example. So I started um, my last year in Tampa, 88. I probably had 30 tackles in four games. Made all the tackles in the world. Against first and second team guys. And they cut me. I love team tackles. You would have said I was a superstar. That's not what you're looking at. Doesn't matter. Um, you got a problem at edge, as far as I'm concerned. Jalex Hunt. According to Vic, it's coming along. Did some nice things. It's coming along. Asked about Nolan. You know what his words were? Yeah, you know, they asked him what he does best. He says he's fast. Um, he's athletic. But here, he's improving. I got it circled here. Improving. Between Huff improving and Nolan Smith improving from the words of your coordinator. Prove him, proving. Look at this guy. I'm awake. Are you? Hey, so here, let's do this. I'm awake. Are you? Who's your uh, a problem at edge? I don't think so. Okay. Who's your top edge rusher? Who are your top two edge rushers? I'm awake, are you? His answer will tell you if you have a problem or not, folks. And then you answer. I won't say nothing. I won't say nothing. I won't say anything. I'll go with you. Bryce Huff's not a great pass rusher. He had a really good year. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Sales, with the O-line depth, would you trade a piece for defense or wide receiver three? 
I think they're probably going to go another week and see what they got at wide receiver three. Guys, please hit the like button. Thank you, guys, man. I can't thank you enough. Xander's going to join us at 3.30. We're waiting. Hopefully, we're able to catch up with uh, Gary Cobb at 4.30, like we always do each and every single Monday. So. Not we got a ton of stuff to hit on, believe me. Nolan Smith improving, improving at what exactly? I don't know. I I don't know. Um yeah, it's funny. I listen to people on IP and um 97.5, and even our guys. I didn't watch the same game you watched. I watch guys that were going against backups. And again, you have to always temper that because it's fool's gold. It's wild how much more instinct the Trotter's been than Dean. Or at least, it, no, you're right. Surgical, you're right. He's a better instinctive player. He's always around the ball. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Absolutely. That's a pretty good call down there, Kyle. Call the Dolphins up. University of Miami, he's a dear friend of mine, Jalen Phillips. I love the kid. Hulse Hunt looks good for some for someone everyone said is completely a project. He's looking better too, James. Yes. Huff looked trash again um, versus second teamers. My hot take is looking better for Hunt having more of an impact. I didn't think that was possible. But you could be right. Okay? You could be right. He's coming along. Seals, we seem to have a lot of players on D that can take advantage of offense mistake. We don't appear to have D players who cause mistakes. You mean playmakers. Well, Gardner Johnson's hurt. So you got to wait for that kind of thing to kind of, you know, play itself out a little bit. Smile or laugh just one, Sills. Just checking. <laughs> uh, hey, my wife says that too, brother. Thank you. Th thank you for reminding me. Thank you. <clears throat> Sills, just joined. Did you see the Reddick news? I did, and thank you, Trey, very much for coming aboard, man, and joining us. You'll have a lot of fun here with us, Trey. We'll go back and forth, and we appreciate your insights too as well. I did. You know what, though, Trey? Isn't it to me like it's like crying wolf? How many times is he going to demand a trade? After a while, I'm going to go, sit the fuck down. You're going to play or you're not going to play? You have no leverage. And you're going to cost yourself a year of, of, um, of service? You ain't missing this year. He's already been fined over almost like a million bucks in fines. Come on, man. Where are you going? Jets have total autonomy in this. Do you understand that when he becomes, uh, he doesn't become a free agent if he doesn't play and he's not on the active roster. The Jets get him again. Jets can play this game as much as he wants to play. He's not a free agent at the end of this year if he's not on the active roster. You know why that's why they did that. It doesn't count against the service clock. If the Eagles have no pass rushers, who do they get? Um, August 12th? That's a little tough one. You'd have to make a trade. You'd have to make a total trade if you're going to go and do something like that, Bald Eagle. I Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Did it seem like the Ravens didn't run a lot of plays, though, at the Eagle defense? How many plays did they have? Like 50? I got to tell you, when you're assessing so many players for starting roles, especially on defense, how many plays did they have in that game? Did the uh, Ravens throw at the Eagles? 55? What was the amount of total plays? That's not a lot. I, I mean, look, and I, remember something. Punt, kickoff, those count as plays. So you got to probably take about 15 or 20 of those because there were a ton of three and outs. 
So you take about 20 plays for the Ravens off that, 15 to 20 plays. Then you go from there. How many plays did the Ravens throw at that defense, really, in a way? Yeah, I'm not talking um, about the Eagles, Mr. International. I'm talking about the Ravens versus the Eagle defense. How many total plays did the Ravens have? Because then you get a good sense, too. I mean, was there a lot of a sample size? Right? You know, I mean, can you get a true evaluation? That game was just terrible, I thought. Um, Sills, did you ask Frabel about um, Harold Landry? He's working with, I think, the Browns right now. So it's kind of tough to get a conversation going with him. Big Pickin said like 40 or something. 48. Dude, JM, you take like 20 plays of special teams away, you got about 48 plays or maybe even less, like 40. Is that a lot? I don't think so. They really didn't play a lot of get, a lot of plays in that game. So the most you could possibly have had, what could Nolan Smith have had? 20 plays? Is that enough to give a good evaluation? I don't know. Versus twos and threes, you had 20 plays? You're probably going to get more of an evaluation with this uh, controlled scrimmage against New England this week on Tuesday. Look at this. JM says 78 for the Eagles and 48 for the Ravens. JM, is that is that also counting special teams? Because if you got to take 20 plays out, I mean, uh, plays out of that whole thing, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Gary Cobb's good for 430, Xander. We can send that link to him. So thank you. Um, you don't really get a good sense. Right? Yeah, so Xander, we can uh Gary Cobb 430, folks. Box 29. He was at the game too, by the way, in Baltimore. Oh, let me go back a little bit on Micaiah Becton. He goes like this, Micaiah Becton, man. Long arms, dog. Dude's a horse. You know, you know what Milton also said about um having Clint Hurt? He goes, that guy is no shit, man. He teaches you how to play in space. And what a smart coordinator he is. What a gift having him as my D-line coach. This guy's been a coordinator in this league for a long time. And to hear him talking to the arse like this. It, dude, you have two defensive coordinators on your defense. That's how experienced your coaching staff is this year defensively compared to what that shit thing was last year. A complete upgrade. Complete upgrade. Complete upgrade from a year ago. Complete upgrade. Cam Jurgens. It's very clear. Cam Jurgens is going to have very little in pass protection. He was asked the question, and Cam Jurgens goes, Well, you know, we're working together, so to speak, but Jalen's pretty much handling it. So Jalen is taking control of that. And if you're a coach, yeah, I want him to do. I want him to. Because that's how he's going to get better. Do you have a problem not sharing information with Cam? I'm not saying he's not. Because you got to be on the same page. It's a new center snap quarterback exchange stuff that Jalen hasn't had in three years. Brand new. He asked, of course, you're going to communicate with him. Um, Prince, I missed the super chat. You're, well, you missed my super chat. Xander, did I miss one of Prince's super chats? I didn't think I did. Ke oh, okay, I did. Kenny sucked. He was late on the throw and under. Kenny, flick it, baby. He moved the sticks. He moved the sticks. Yes, sir. He moved the sticks.
Um, he says it looks like they're settling in on Becton being over on the um, right side. Kenny Flickett. So Kelsey gives him some insight from what I'm talking, what I'm hearing. Okay. <clears throat> this kid Tyler Steen, though, dude. <clears throat> Come on, son. Not seeing it, man. Okay, not seeing it. He goes like this. Be, for, be prepared. We're going to see a lot of exotic blitzes early in the year. And we're prepared for that. Joe Douglas informed Reddick he will not be traded and will continue to be fined for the CBA, according to Adam Schefter. Hey. Hey, Mr. Hong Kong Fu, he can do whatever he wants. He ain't fucking going anywhere. Whoa. Whoa. This guy's going to have to go to a dojo pretty soon. He put some spell on Joe Douglas. Whoa. Or go to Mr. Fuji. Uh, hey, Danielson. Hassan. <laughs> Wipe on. Wipe off. Wipe on. Wipe off. <laughs> hey, come on, Hassan. Better go find me a bonsai here, dog, because. That's the only thing you're going to be working here, man, is looking for a bonsai tree somewhere. Sweep the leg. Give him the crow. Hey, that's Reddit trying to get Joe Douglas the crow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. Thank you, Kyle. I didn't have my reference correct. Thank you. Mr. Miyagi, hit the like button, fellas. I appreciate it. And gals, thank you so much. Didn't mean to insult, Sue. Thank you. So, no, man. Some good shit here. Here's Tanner McKee. Then we'll get to Nikki. Bonsai. <laughs> Bonsai Reddick. Bonsai. <laughs> hey, just remember this. It, only a jet like Jody McDowell and all them dudes could appreciate it being a jet nightmare because only the Jets can have shit like that happen to them. Always, hey, always remember, too, when your two most famous people are Fireman Ed, a guy who hits himself in the head with a hammer, and Joe Namath, Hey, so both three. So both three. Yeah, so both three. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. The last time they were decent. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, Apollo 11, for all you youngsters. You know? The Reddick has landed. The Reddick has landed. Man, man, here's Tanner McKee. I like him. By the way, if you're passing out um, Academy Awards for being able to handle the microphone for the three quarterbacks, including Hertz, Tanner McKee's the best guy behind the mic. I like him. He's he's really good behind the mic. Must be that Stanford bullshit because he's pretty good behind the mic. You know, I mean, I I, I like him. There's there's a lot to like about him. Eight moon landing. Andreas goes, dude, the world's flat and no one landed on the moon. Kyrie Irvin and you, brother. You got it covered. We're good. Um, he said this, man. He said that um Kellen Moore's offense is always situational, making you have to think. You get to the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah, there it is. The keys that Kellen says, he goes, when you come to the line of scrimmage, he's got three, four keys for you to look at. And he goes, oh, yeah, I see what he's saying. There it is. There's like these three keys or four keys 
that you'll see in a Kellen Moore offense. And you get a chance to audible out of that or you get a chance to audible something in the different, which is great. Gives the quarterbacks the autonomy to find the open guy, which means, what did we say two weeks ago? Everybody's an eligible open opportunity. This guy's better than I thought, at least schematically. We'll see situationally. There's a difference. Okay? Brian Johnson didn't suck last year. Everybody had career years. But situationally, he was terrible. Now, was that a lot of Nick? Probably. Okay? He said he thought he ran a smooth operation, like the song, too. Um, he said it was smooth. Some still things we can work out. But um, that's what Kellen's looking for. A smooth operation where, you know, pre-snap penalties, audible to the right call, shit like that. Okay? He said this new, get this. Um, this new motion, listen what he says here. This gives you goosebumps. This guy, Tanner McKee, is freaking smart. When you when when Kellen Moore sends motion, you know what he's looking for? He's looking for a landmark. Send a motion. Guy will hit the landmark. He knows to go there. The motion sets the guy on the backside or front side. And he's looking for that particular landmark. He don't know what that landmark's going to be. Could be a backdoor, free, strong, or nickel, or dime. You don't know yet. The motion's going to dictate it. So you got to be patient. McKee's saying, you're looking for those landmarks. And when when Tanner explains it way better than Hurts, this Kellen Moore offense, even better than Kenny Pickett, he's like, yeah, man, when you move a guy, you send him in motion, and all of a sudden there will be the landmark, and you see it. Tanner McKee it has a big arm, but you know what he also has? This guy's smart as shit, man. And the more re- I'd give him more reps. I want to see what he can do. You know, he moves around in a pocket a little bit like Roethlisberger. He's got a gun like him, too. He's smarter than Big Ben. I would think, then again, a rock is smarter than Big Ben. I, I just, you know, and you know what else he does, too, in the pocket that's pretty cool? He stands with poise. He stands tall. He's 6'6", six, six as it is. He stands with great poise back there. I mean, he's looking downfield. You can always tell, you know, look. Those young quarterbacks that, you know, have that head down, they're looking to get hit. And quarterbacks that are looking downfield like that, you know what an offensive lineman sees on film? When you see something like that, my quarterback's looking to make a play downfield. When you got a quarterback that got his head down like this, he's looking to escape. Offensive line knows that guy's not going to hand and stand in the pocket. Is it a lack of courage? Maybe a little. Well, you got a quarterback looking downfield. He's going to get annihilated. Even on some great throws, he's going to – how many times you see Brady get crushed making those big passes down the field? Offensive line, man, they want to block for guys with courage in the pocket. This kid's got a little bit of that. Okay? I'm awake, are you? Goes, I've never heard you mention McKee. Yeah, because I haven't seen him play much. And he really looks good in this system. Okay. I mean, just keep developing them. Still, should Tanner start this week over Pickett? Yeah, I'd, I'd want to get him more reps. I know what Pickett is. Okay. When I, I, I want to see more out of him, I want to see this kid. Put him in there against some better people. Okay. Put him out there. Just, just let me see what he's got. I want to see more. Hey, by the way, am I saying he should? I don't know. I just want to see more of him. 
I want to see more. Uh, what's his name? Says he mocked Tanner on Friday. No, I mocked you. Um, he's throwing to nobodies and completing passes. Mr. International says, I know. I want to see him out there again versus some people. Let's take a look at him out there with some better people. Um, yeah. Now let's get let now let's get to Nick Chiriani. Oh, by the way, did you hear that press conference? And did you hear that asshole Howard Eskin? So, Coach, how does it feel to get the win? Oh my God. How does it feel to get the win versus twos and threes when both teams didn't play their starters? And just to get the win, coach, what's that like? How'd that feel? <laughs> oh, man. It felt as good as that kiss you gave that chick at the Phillies game. Ah, that's how good it felt. A little rough. <laughs> ah. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I had to do it. Oh, man. Hey, Coach, how did it feel to get the win? Oh, great. You even looked at you. Did you see Nick's face, too? He's like, he took a drink of water, and he's like, let me in. <laughs> I got to answer that? All right. <laughs> Oh, man. Howard Munchkin. <laughs> oh, man. Holy cow. Sales called AJ the biggest crybaby in the league. He is. Man, I want to get my money. I want to get my money. The what they did. He cried and got the bank. He cried and got his money. Way to go, man. Hey, if you can cry and get your money, more power to you, too. I never at any time said the guy at all didn't deserve it. Guy's got to cry too, man. He want my money. <clears throat> Howard's a good guy. <laughs> hey, Nick, how'd you feel about the, the win? Had to be great for you. <laughs> what a provocative question. I mean, you could ask them anything. How did it feel for the win? Second question at the press conference. Here, here we go. I didn't want to play my offensive guys because it was a little wet out. What you play the D guys? Well, you know, um, you know, we just, you know, there were some battles there and it's a different situation. And why don't you just say we got a lot of new guys over there? We got new coaches over there. We got entirely new staff, pretty much. Pretty much the same staff outside of a few guys on offense. And it's a better group of veterans. Why don't you just say that instead of that meandering question or answer? Well, you know, we got to do it. He's so dopey at a mic. Why can't you just be honest? Well, our offense didn't need it. I didn't want to get a chance of those guys getting hurt. And the defensive guys were all new over there. They need to work. They had to work. Every guy in the room would be okay with that. Instead, it's, well, you know, we got to do this. And, you know, you know, it's a little bit newer there. But, you know, we just, you know, we, 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 we were careful, you know. I didn't play BG. You're not going to play BG there in the year anyway this year. <laughs> I was like, he can't tell the truth to save his life. I agree with him on this, though. I thought even though they were going against twos and threes, I did think that the uh, players played with um, with some physicality, and they they played hard. They ran to the ball, threw the ball. I didn't think um, I didn't think they were. I didn't I didn't I didn't think they uh, was lack of effort. Um. It's funny listening to Nick Sirianni talk about Nolan Smith and Vic Fangio. 
Here's Vic Fangio talking about Nolan Smith. Yeah, you know, the offensive tackle blew an assignment. You know, he got late getting out there. Nolan cashed in, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, what was the word? He's improving. And um, here's um, Nick blowing up Howie. Oh, man, I thought Nolan Smith played great. Funny how Vic doesn't see it that way. How is Brown the biggest baby when you have Reddick? I never heard Reddick crying on the Eagle team a year ago. Um, Yeah, I mean, because you know why? Nick's got to kiss Howie's ass. Vic don't. Thought the communication was good. You know, it's kind of hard listening to him talk at a press conference when he hadn't seen the game film yet. Joint practices begin on Tuesday. So 